Shalom to the elect of the nation of Israel. Yeah, it's another edition of uh, the Daily Edification Exhortation. It's another GMS walk and talk. And um, basically I'm going to talk about, uh, you know, what's coming in the future. Basically all hell getting ready to break loose. You know, the prophecy in the book of Jeremiah uh, 30 and 7 says, a time of trouble as the earth has never seen. And uh, this is what's coming upon the planet earth. And we know, according to the book of Amos 3 and 6 and Isaiah 47, and, I'm sorry, Isaiah 45 and 7, we know that the Heavenly Father is the one that created the evil. And also, he said that, shall there be evil in the city, and he have not done it. And now uh, we know that the word evil is from the Latin EV, which is F. The Latin word F is, means age. And uh, ill, which completes the word evil, ill means bad. So when you put it together, it literally means bad age or a bad time. So that's what's coming. A real bad time upon the planet Earth. In other words, before it gets better, and it's going to get better for us Israelites, beginning with the Lord's elect, it's going to get worse. And this is what we expect. We expect that. And that's according to Bible prophecy. So once again, I'm here in this edition of the Walk and Talk. Once again, I'm here to uh, remind you, brothers, of that. Stir up your pure minds, as it were. What's it say in the book of uh, Jude? Uh, the Lord set up the prophets to stir up the pure minds of his elect. Because at the end of the day, the only ones that's going to be delivered out of this uh, horrific situation is the elect of the nation of Israel. You go in the book of Romans, what is that? Romans, the, the uh, 11th chapter, the 7th verse. It says, the elect have obtained it. Obtain what? The truth. But the rest were blinded. The rest of who? The rest of the nation of Israel. So, you that's listening, if you're able to follow and understand and believe, then you're truly immensely blessed. That, that very well may mean you're, you're part of the elect. And when Yahweh Shai comes back, pursuant to, uh, what is that, Matthew, the 24th chapter, when Yahweh Shai comes back, who's he going to gather? He's going to gather his elect. That's who. He's going to gather the elect of the nation of Israel. Something to add to that too, when you look up the word elect, in the Blue Letter Bible it says, people of the highest class possible in our nation, the elect. So truly they're, they're, they're immensely blessed, you know? So uh, that's who's going to be delivered. Everybody else in America, Babylon the Great, which is also known as Babylon the Great, everybody else is going to die, man, be destroyed. Now, the two-thirds of the Israelites that die, the two-thirds are going to return through the one-third that make it. That's why when you go in the book of uh, Romans, the 11th chapter, the 26th verse, it says, And so all Israel shall be saved. So, that's how that's going to go down. But we want to, again, it is written, I think it's in Micah. It's written, um, uh, uh, Blessed are they that partake in the first resurrection which is talking about the whole nation but when you when you are uh, fine-tune it that scripture is really referring to the elect the elect of Israel they're truly blessed you know so you know we pray through the Holy Spirit that um, we're part of that group we're part of that elect because like I said they're they're immensely blessed and uh, again going back to the topic 
this is what we expect according to Bible prophecy. We expect um, we expect all hell to break loose. We expect uh, when I say all hell, I mean well, starting with right after the uh, uh, election, which is supposed to happen tonight, as I'm filming, it's supposed to go down tonight. Whether it's uh, Trump or Biden that wins, whether it's Trump or Biden, it really it, it doesn't matter because all hell is going to break loose. That's that's the prophecy. Uh, one scripture that comes to mind is Amos, the ninth chapter, the tenth verse, where it clearly says the the Lord has His eye upon who, the sinful kingdom. The sinful kingdom, let's talk about America, man. America's that uh, sinful kingdom, right? And what is sin? Transgression of the law. So America is responsible daily for breaking all the laws of the Heavenly Father. All right? So eventually, the Heavenly Father is going to destroy this place. So that, that is what we're witnessing. We're witnessing the beginning of the end. So when you see all this hell that's about to come on this place, multiply, just know that that's the beginning of the end for this place called America. That's the beginning of the end for this place called Babylon in the scriptures, which the word Babylon means confusion. And that's a beautiful thing because right after this place is destroyed, pursuant to 2 Peter 3 and 13, as it is written, the Lord said he will, will uh, make a new heaven and a new earth. Now we know our Greek, the word new means refreshed. So it's the same old earth that's going to be refreshed by that destruction. So in other words, the destruction of this place called America, which is Babylon the Great, will be a refreshment for this planet earth. No more will wickedness be ruling. It'll be a time of uh, righteousness. Okay, so, you know, we're, we're like I always say, we're men of vision and... Uh, you know, we, we, we see it coming, man. We, and that's what bolsters our faith. The fact that we're able to... Now, there's a scripture where it says, where there is no vision, the people perish. So, Barakatha Yahweh Bashim Shai has given us that vision. And when I say us, those, those of us that believe in this truth, those of us that are of the hopeful elect, he's given us that vision, man, the, the, the ability to see the future based upon the scriptures, you know, which, excuse me, which uh, the, prof the prophets, they were also called what? Seers. Now, when you look up that word seer, it means a visionary. S-E-E-R, that's how you spell it. It means a visionary. So, definitely, Yahweh Shimei Shah through the scriptures, has given us the future, has shown us the future of what's to come on this planet Earth. The good, or should I say the bad, as well as the good. The bad comes first. Like the old saying goes, it's always darkest before the dawn. So it's gonna get pretty dark. And uh, I gotta make a correction. I said, Trump had said it's gonna be a dark winter. Rather, Biden said that. It's gonna be a dark winter, which means a lot of problems. And that's what we expect. We expect that. That's why, um, see, we have that kind of mentality because we know this is not our rest, pursuant to uh, Micah 2 and 10, where it clearly says, arise and depart, which we have done in our minds. It starts in the mind, right? Arise and depart, for this is not your rest. This is not our rest, okay? The cesspool called America, that's not our rest. Really, this world, the system of this world, which is controlled by who? Esau, Edom, so-called white man. This is not our rest. So the scripture have directed us to arise and depart. And that's what this knowledge does for us. It gives us a mentality of arising and departing from the, the, the so-called pleasures of this world. Like me, I, I, I lead a very boring life, man. Like, you know, right now, a couple of females that wouldn't mind talking to me, that, that claim they're in the, you know, claim they're in the truth, but who wouldn't want to get with a guy like me? because I have like a very boring life. You know why? Because to me, everything in this life is BS. The only thing that makes sense to me is engulfing my mind in this truth. You know, 
That's the only thing that makes sense to me because everything else is BS, bullshit, you know? So I live a very simple, boring life because I'm waiting, patiently waiting for your Howard Shai to come and destroy the society. That's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for all hell to break loose and this society be destroyed. I'm looking for the mandatory imp implantation of that chip according to Bible prophecy, Revelation 13 and 16. I'm looking for uh, what is written in 2nd Ezra, the 15th chapter, where it speaks about a man shall desire to go to the city and shall not be able. So that means uh, roadblocks. That means the city is being cordoned off. That means martial law in the cities because the main place martial law is going to take place is in the cities. So the cities, after a while, the cities will not be the best place to be. Okay, because it tells us that in the prophecy. And every time I mention the scripture, I'd like you brothers, you, you sincere brothers, that is, because you got a lot of Israelites that are full of crap, man. They just want to be entertained. But you brothers that just, you, <laughs> you want to be edified rather than entertained, please put the scriptures, as I mentioned them, in the comment section. So that way, the lesson carries on, you know? Um, yeah, so, yeah, man, so, um, we're talking about, uh, roadblocks, we're talking about, uh, military roadblocks, that is, we're talking about forced vaccination, okay, forced vaccination, any, it, it, basically anything that can go wrong, going wrong, okay, in this society, so, that's our mentality, our mentality is not to be comfortable. Oh, hell no. Okay? Our mentality is to brace for the evil that's coming. And how do we do that? We do that by, uh, especially prayer. Okay? Uh, the scriptures speak about that we ought to always pray and not to faint. Because even, even the, now men were stronger back then. I'm talking about the prophets and they made statement, statements like who, when they saw in the vision, when they saw the coming destruction, that we're in that time period now, they said, well, who shall deliver me in those days? <laughs> That's what I believe it was Ezra who said that. Habakkuk also said the same thing. So it's going to get pretty nasty out here. And, and men were, when those, those men made that statement, men were stronger back then mentally than they are now. So can you imagine? There's a scripture that comes to mind where it says, who shall be able to abide in the day of the Lord? <laughs> because uh, Zephaniah, in the first chapter, the first chapter of uh, Zephaniah, uh, Zephaniah describes the great day of the Lord. Starting around, around what, the 14th verse? He said, for the great day of the Lord is near. It is very terrible, you know? So... It's going to get pretty nasty out here, brothers. And uh, right now, we're in a time where you have, to, you have to have faith and you have to fear. You have to fear the Lord, Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai. You have to fear the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, and His Son, Yahweh Shai. Because as it is written, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. The fear of the Lord. A lot of, a lot of guys in Israel... A lot of guys in Israel, they don't fear. They don't fear uh, Yahweh Bar Shemiah Shai. You can, you can see it in their actions. Like the old saying goes, action speaks louder than words, right? So you can see it in their actions. You know, they, uh, they say whatever they want. They do whatever they want without seriously considering or con uh, consulting the scriptures. And then the Lord raised up certain men to tell them what they're doing wrong, which are the prophets, because that's the job of the prophets, to reprove, rebuke, as it is written, right? And those guys, in their pride, they say, man, we ain't listening to you. We do whatever the hell we want to do in this truth. Which, which, <laughs> which, the answer to that is no, you can't do whatever the hell you want to do in this truth. If you do something in this truth, you better make sure it's in line with the Holy Spirit, you better make sure it's in line with Yahweh Shai. At least Yahweh Shemiah Shai destroy you among the congregation. And that's what's getting ready to happen. A lot of guys, a lot of guys are getting ready to be 
be taken out brutally by the spirit of Yahweh Shem Yahshai. I'm telling you, man, it's coming. Uh, to back me up on that, uh, the book of First Peter, the fourth chapter. Where, where does this, where does it say judgment will begin? At the house of the heavenly Father. What's the house of the heavenly Father? The nation of Israel. That's First Peter four and seventeen. Let's not forget that. That's why I tell you, brothers, that we got to be uh, fearful of the great power of Yahweh Hashem Shah because, as it is written, judgment will begin at the house of the of the heavenly Father. First Peter four and seventeen, and that's with the uh, brothers that know that they're Israelites, or I, or should I say, individuals, because not everybody is a brother. That's in uh, Jeremiah, what is that, the ninth chapter. As it is written, every brother shall supplant. So not every guy in Israel is a brother. So judgment is going to start, and I'm talking about brutal judgment, is going to start with those that know that they're Israelites. So us knowing that, shouldn't we be afraid? Shouldn't we be uh, careful, lack of a better word, of what we do and what we say in the ministry? Well, I think so. I think that we should, but a lot, a lot of guys don't feel that way. A lot of guys say, hey, I could, I could do whatever I want to do. Okay, well, you're the individual that Yahweh Shem Yahushai is going to use to make an example of, which is going to scare the shit out of the rest of the individuals and scare them back into line, you know? And I know I don't want to be no example, no negative example for Israel. I would like to be a positive example for our nation not a negative example that's why the apostle like the apostle paul said he keeps under his body at least he himself be what a castaway a reject you know to me that's the most terrible thing you know to be called in this truth and, and become a reject but you know i'm a little all over the place but um i'm just speaking according to the holy spirit i, I didn't really have a set topic or bullet points that i was going to go into I'm just speaking according to the Holy Spirit, okay? And at the same time, doing my little walk and talk, trying to get a brother in shape, as you can see. <laughs> yeah, but, um, yeah, brothers, all hell is getting ready to break loose, man. You know, uh, I'm talking about famines. The scriptures tell us about famines, and, and it's easy to have a famine. The word famine, when you go into, see, going into words is, is, is extremely meaningful. The word famine just means hungry, okay? People hear the word famine and they're thinking of a, a land that's not bringing forth crops and everybody is, you know, suffering from malnutrition. <laughs> their, their bellies are all big, like, you know, kind of like um, Ethiopia. You know, how the, back in the 80s, you had the starving Ethiopians. That's what people think the word famine, uh, that's the image that conjures up from the word famine. But the word famine, if you know your, your Latin, slash Italian, fame, simply means hungry. The word fame comes from the word, or the word famine comes from the Latin fame, which means hungry. So it's a very easy thing for this society, which you're going to have food rations and you're going to have uh, curfews and whatnot. So it's a very easy thing for this society to go hungry, for the average person to go hungry. They say that uh, they did a study that the average person has three days worth of food in their homes. So let's say the cities are shut shut off and they can do that. You go back into history, what happened in Masada? Masada was a city in Jerusalem. Did not the Romans uh, shut off that city and starve many people? Well, there you go. So you're gonna have another example of uh, Masada, another modern day Masada. So, it, let's say the cities are shut off for a week or two. Come on. That, that is some serious famine right there. Some serious hunger. Because the word famine, like I said, from the Latin fame, which means hungry. So it's very easy in this time for Esau to shut off, you know, the, the truck stop going to the supermarkets because that's how food gets, gets here, by those trucks. And I do remember... Uh, when they had the first lockdown, uh, coronavirus lockdown, I do remember it was a, p a particular Saturday we were coming back from New York, heading back to Connecticut, and we noticed there were barely any trucks on the highways. We noticed it was so noticeable because usually 
Saturday night, we're going back. It's, the road is filled with trucks, usually. Well, there wasn't, as far as I can remember, we probably saw only one truck on the highway. This was uh, during the coronavirus uh, lockdown, the first one. So now they say that they're getting ready to bring a second one, and it's going to be even more devastating than the first one. So there you go. There's your famines. And Yahweh Shai said that a sign of, one of the signs of his coming is famine. So we're living in a time period to look for the signs of Yahweh Shai's coming, and it's not going to be good. It's going to be terrible. That's why, as the scripture has said, the heart of the wise is in what? The house of mourning. Now you've got other Israelites that are not taking that seriously. You know, they think that they, they don't take the words of this Bible seriously. They think that those are just pretty poetic words. <laughs> it's a lot more than that, man. Those, those words are, are, are what? Prophecy. Those words are guideline, as it is written, a schoolmaster to tell us what's going to happen in the future. And those with the, with the right kind of vision, as it is written, where there is no vision, the people perish. Those with the right kind of vision will see it and be afraid. What did Habakkuk said? He said, oh Lord, I heard thy speech and I was afraid. He was afraid. That was the prophet Habakkuk and Hab Habakkuk is back in the reincarnation. All the prophets are back. Some of them are in the spirit world, but the majority of them are back on the planet Earth. Why? Because they got a job to do. This is, this is the last prophecy as it were, you know? And the word pro prophet or prophecy literally means to say before. So we're, based upon the Holy Scriptures, we're saying things that's going to happen before it happens. All right, so the mentality we should be having, brothers, is, is a, a solemn mentality. This is, this, we're not living in the time of, of fun and games. All right, we're not living in the time of party, party, party. You know, like that certain group... IUIC, they did that video. It's an Israelite party. This is not an Israelite party, man. The mentality, mentality we should be having is a solemn mentality. Get ready for that huge shit storm that's coming. And it, indeed, it's going to be a shit storm. Or to coin the words that, um, that uh, uh, Alex Jones used in his video, Terror Storm. You should check that video out. It's pretty old, but it gives you an idea a roadmap, if you will, of what's coming to this place called America. Then he used to have a channel, I don't know if he still has it, uh, Prison Planet. That's exactly what's going to happen. America, America, which is already a prison, is going to be even more of a prison because the word America means bitter. America has been a, a prison for our people. And it's, it's time for Yahweh Shai to liberate us from that prison. Because that's what America is. It's nothing but a prison for our people. Those of us that have woken up to this truth, all right? It's a prison for us. As it is written, the captive seek to be what? Loose. We're the captive. And I always go into that. You know how we're slaves to this so-called white man. We're slaves to Esau through the myriad of, of contracts that Esau has placed upon us. Beginning with the birth certificate, then the uh, uh, social security, you know, and all these different contracts that, that prove that we're nothing but slaves to this devil. We're nothing but slaves to this society. So it's a good thing that all hell is getting ready to break loose because that's the beginning of our liberation. And let, let me not forget about those chariots, the so-called UFOs. Okay, we're getting ready to see more and more uh, uh, um, sightings of so-called UFOs, which they represent what? The so-called UFOs, they represent our liberation. All right, that's going to be the instrument to deliver us from this destruction, them so-called UFOs. So we got a lot to look forward to, brothers, and the few sisters that watch these videos. We got a lot to look forward to. You know, uh, most of it, for now, it will be bad. But after the bad passes, then here comes the good, okay? <laughs> like I said in one of my videos, it's going to be all gravy. <laughs> it's going to be all gravy after that. You know, first we, you know, got to deal with the bad. Then we're going to look for the good. Because the good is coming. Remember our power, the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, He does all His works in what? In balance. 
as it is written, a false balance is an abomination to the Lord, right? A false balance is an abomination to the Lord. So all his works are done in balance. So yeah, he's going to bring the evil, but then right after the evil, after his, his work is done, then he's going to bring the good. Part of the good is we're going to have all these other nations as our slaves, beginning with Esau, our tormentor, our oppressor. They're going to be our slaves. So let me end it there. This camera is about to uh, shut down. Hopefully you were edified by this video, and I'll see you in the next one. Shalom for now.